I'm going to try to visit with a girl that Brittany from Wyoming has introduced us to or passed along the contact information. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know if Brittany's going to be a part of this as well. And the crazy thing about this is, is I think that this chick has got some really wild charges too. I think I got a chance to look her up. I'm pretty sure that I did. Yeah, so let's see if we can get, I think this chick's name is Alyssa. Alyssa. Maybe. I can imagine right now as the tablet is ringing in the housing unit, Alyssa, if she's hearing this, is telling Brittany, yo, that guy from television, what's his name? The Dateline guy? That's kind of who I feel like sometimes. He's calling me. Now, if this doesn't go through, it'll only make me wonder. I wonder what's going on. It's not looking promising, folks. It's not looking promising at all. They can deny this. You know, you don't have to let it keep ringing, but maybe they're on lockdown or there's no telling. All right, well, that's not looking promising. We'll go ahead and kill that one. Who else do we got? I know we got some other people. God, I got a lot of people from that same place. God, I got a lot of people from that same place. Anybody from anywhere different? All right, we're going to try something real quick. So people are reaching out to me and they're saying, hey, Joe, you should go try to message somebody from X, Y, and Z. You want crazy? Go visit somebody out here. So somebody had said, Joe, you need to go try to message somebody from somewhere in Oregon. I'm going to have to remember. I'll tell you in just a second. Oh, Jackson County, Oregon. That's right. That's right. And this was Chris. Chris messaged me on Facebook and said, Joe, you want crazy? Go to Jackson County, Oregon. Oregon. Well, Chris, you asked for it. Let's see what's happening out here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I think I can just visit request anybody here. I think I can. This guy looks kind of, kind of wild. Uh, Jack. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have to, I don't even have to request a visit at this facility. I can literally just try to visit now. So that is what's up. I mean, the, you want to talk about completely out of the blue? Oregon. They're on three hours behind us, so it's about whew, about 10 o'clock in the morning their time. They're just getting up. Jack, you should be available. Jack looks kind of crazy in his, in his picture, his profile. So, Chris, let's see what's going on out in Jackson County, Oregon. Is it going to be crazier than Idaho? Because so far, Idaho is taking the cake for craziest. In terms of not crazy, New Hampshire, ironically enough, is winning in that department. I haven't even got to share anything yet about New Hampshire. Or maybe by the time you guys are seeing any of this, maybe I have. Hey, Jack, are you available? Random stranger, the tooth fairy is ringing. Jack, the call of the century is trying to visit with you right now. Jack looked like a friendly guy, too, in the, in the picture. Sure hope he accepts. My, oh, God, darn. I was going to say my fingers are crossed. I just hit my finger. Jack, you got five seconds to accept this visit before we move on to somebody else from Jackson County, Oregon. One, two, three, three and a half, four, five. Jack? You lost. You're out. You've been eliminated. All right, we'll try again. Oh, yeah, Jack, you, you lost out. You're looking like a psychopath in that picture right there. If I'm able to get a visit with somebody just this random without having to send the visitation request first, that would be awesome. Uh, Jeanette, I think. Oh, Jeanette's in a visit right now. Son of a gun. This is my struggle, folks, is trying to find people. Terrell. Well, let's go with Terrell. Can we get Terrell on the line? Gosh, Marty, I can't do it. I'm thinking I might not be able to do that. I might have to schedule the visits here. I'll try one more. One more. Uh, 
oh my God, this one might actually go through. This A guy by the name of Dallas out in Jackson County, Oregon. Dallas, if that's your real name. Now this one also didn't have a profile. Now this one also didn't have the profile picture showing, but it's allowing us to try to visit. So we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if the no profile picture when you go to try to visit means they're in lockdown or if maybe the thing is just glitching a little bit. Uh, Dallas. Hey. Hey, how you doing? My name's Joe. You don't know me at all. Um, but I, I got a YouTube channel. It's called After Prison Show. I served seven years in prison myself. And I like to visit with random people. No funny business about this. I uh, just try to see if they're interested in doing a, a random visit with me to share what their time is like that they're serving. And I try to help you get some pen pal support if that's something that you're interested in. And send $20 for either the kiosk or for your commissary. Okay. Uh, is that cool with you? I suppose. Cool deal. Hey, you're in uh, Oregon? Yeah. So I'm in Virginia. I served uh, time in the Virginia uh, system. What's it like out there where you're at? Jackson County, right? Yeah. Um, it's not very, it's not very great. No, I don't, I don't imagine that it probably is. Somebody had messaged me. I was visiting with somebody from uh, Idaho. So they had messaged me and they said, man, you want, and, and it was pretty crazy in Idaho. And they said, you want to see a crazy place? You need to go to Jackson County, Oregon. So I was scrolling through some folks. I ran across you. Uh, and here we are. Okay. So uh, how long huh. you been locked up for? Um, since the 23rd of last month. Are you facing time? Or are you short time? Uh, it should be short time, I'm hoping. But uh, no word on me getting out yet, so. Uh, what are you locked up for? And you ain't got to be specific. You can be vague if you want to. I'm not trying to, you know, know the ins and outs of your situation. Um, I, I'm messed up. i uh, got a couple person-person crimes. Okay. Um, yeah, so. But like a theft charge or something like that? Um, well, it's actually a, a bird too. Okay. Like breaking but, into something, um, but I was just trying to get some clarification because I, I could hear person to person and think it could be something, um, no. you know, pretty bad, uh, but no, 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 it's not violent. It's not violent or nothing like that. But, um, there was just, a. yeah, I don't like talking about the details too You're much. Good. I don't wanna... We don't need to know about it. We can leave it at that. So uh, you've only been in there for a little bit of time. You're not thinking that you're going to be in there for very long. Is that because you're hoping to make bond or, I mean, I don't know, do you not have a criminal record? Uh, I don't have much of one. I do, but um, so I, I recently got put on a, a downward departure. What and is then, that? Uh, I, I'm like not familiar with it. Yeah. It's where, it's where they hold time over your head. And if you get in any trouble, then they send you upstate for however the duration. Okay. So yeah. So they gave me a 19 month downward departure and I successfully completed it. So I'm trying to get put on another downward departure, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure how successful I'll be at that. How lucky I'll get. Okay. Well, let me ask you this and you know, um, I hope it ain't too personal. Is drugs a part of your uh, situation? Most definitely. So what's it like out there in Oregon? Is it the heroin and fentanyl or is it the meth? Because it seems to be one of the two. Um, I'd say the heroin and the fentanyl. And I only say that because, like I said, I've been doing this for probably a couple of weeks now, uh, 10, 11 people. You're probably the, the 11th person that I've gotten a chance to speak to from all over the country. That's a pretty interesting thing as well, uh, but it's always either the addiction, and if it is the addiction, it's you know either meth or you know heroin or fentanyl. It's honestly, it's all of it here though in Jackson County. It's all of it. So, is there a real bad drug problem out there? Oh yeah, ever since they decriminalized it too. That's right. I just read about that uh, earlier this year, maybe late last year. All drugs are legal in Oregon now, aren't they? Well. Not so much legal, 
but yeah, kind of. Uh, That's the way the news not, made it. It's not, it's not illegal to be high. It's illegal to be in be possession with drugs. Okay. Yes. Well, then the news made it seem like God bless you. You could have meth or whatever on you, and you was good to go. They weren't going to prosecute it. Um, yeah, it's not so much that, but it's it's like a misdemeanor now. So you're in this jail. What's the jail like that you're in? It's crappy. They don't treat us very good. Uh, Commissary is expensive. <laughs> Looks like you're in an it's open like dorm right there, right? Yeah, this is a dorm. Um, here in the state of Virginia, they charge like $3 a day to be in certain facilities. Uh, do they charge y'all like pay to stay there? It costs $8 for the lodging fee. You get this little wristband right here and then they let you use a, a, a plastic spoon and a plastic uh, rubber cup and you don't get to keep the spoon or the cup, but they charge you for it. So it's just an $8 flat fee, like a booking fee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's better than some places. You said that the commissary is expensive out there. Uh, how much does a ramen noodle cost? Uh, like 95 cents. So, yeah, that's on the higher side. I've heard anywhere from like 40 cents upwards of like a dollar five, a dollar oh nine. Um, in my state, it's on the higher side as well. Upwards of a dollar in the jails, in the prisons is 33 cents, though. It's kind of crazy how that is. Yeah. What do you got I've for heard the same? What do you got for support out there? Do you have anybody on the outside, girlfriend, family, anybody like holding you down while you're in there? Uh, my mom. Well, it's good to have at least that. Um, you come from a good family. You don't mind me asking that? Yeah, I come from a good family, but um, uh, financial times are kind of rough with my family right now. My dad's going through a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. How old are you? How old? Uh, I'll be 28 on September 4th. I'm really hoping to get out before my birthday. So if you were able to get out, would you be trying to change or are you just going to like keep it moving yeah, and no, do the really, same thing? I really, I really want to get into like a, a treatment program like inpatient at the ARC, the Addictions Recovery Center. Um, I've been hearing a lot of things about their inpatient program. I tried their outpatient program and it really wasn't for me, but. So you need something a little more intensive, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I can send you... OHP does cover it, so... Oh, say that again, I didn't hear you. OHP does cover it. Oh, like, okay. Um, Oregon Health Plan, the insurance, they, they cover um, the addiction recovery program, so... Okay, yeah, I don't know anything about that, um, but yeah, that's good that you got it covered at least. Look, um, I could send you twenty dollars and either put it on this kiosk or put it on your commissary account. Which one would you prefer? I put it on uh, the commissary account for sure. So, what are you doing there? You've been in there only for a little bit of time. You're hoping to go home. What? Do you, how are you passing your time in there? Um, I enjoy reading books, but I'm out of books to read. <laughs> what? How many people are in the housing unit with you? Is there, is there a lot of people in there? Uh, roughly like twenty or so. And, um, like, what's the atmosphere like in there? Is it a chill pod? Is it, like, everybody gets along? Is there a lot of bullshit going on? Um, everybody, for the most part, gets along in this one. Um, but I've had bad experiences in the dorms before where it's, like, a lot of drama, a lot of bullshit. This one's pretty chill. Hell, yeah. Well, at least you're able to do the time, whatever that time is, in some kind of peace. It sounds very yeah. quiet in there. It don't sound like there's a lot of uh, riffraff and hooting and hollering going on. Yeah, yeah, we got a rule. It's uh, 10 to 10, uh, quiet time, and it's only 10.30 right now, so it's just, you know, 30 minutes past the quiet time. Everybody, for the most part, we, we try to kick it. We try to sleep. We read our books. We do our thing. We just try to keep peace in here. What's the 10 to 10? Is that a like an institutional rule, or is that like a, like a you know, politic? It's just a respect thing, you know, 10, 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning. Everybody be quiet and... But that's what you the know, inmates like have made up, or is that like what? The yeah, that's that's just what the inmates have made up. That's not like a. That's a height right there. I mean, that's uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> keeps the noise down at the very least. You got guys that'll come in there and try to. You ever seen guys go in there and try to be like you know not respecting that? Oh, if it, if people don't respect it, they get they get rolled up and sent out of here. You know. Yeah, I can imagine for, for sure. The most part, for the most part, yeah, the dorm stands up for each other and. And we don't really allow disrespect. 
Hell yeah. Well, like I said, um, it's crazy because getting a chance to visit with you, I was able to literally just click on your name and go to this instant visit. In the, with other facilities, I have to request the visit and then um, they have to accept it. And that's just the procedure there. You get a visit from a random dude. What are you thinking? Like, like who is yeah. this weirdo? Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, who the hell is giving me a video visit? Because I'm not one of the ones that get to call on the kiosk a lot, you know? Okay, okay. Uh, first time I got a call in the kiosk, I'm like, my mom's trying to video visit me or something, you know? That's wild. Um, well, I'm, I'm I glad I was able to give you this visit. You know, it doesn't sound like you got a whole hell of a lot of support in there, and it's just something to be able to do. Like I said, I don't come for no funny business about this at all. I got a YouTube channel with a pretty large following. It's called After Prison Show, and I try to visit with people and either try to help them get pen pal support or put $20 on their books. Um, and just hear what the time is like from state to state. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Man, you know, people cool. are, yeah. people are going to get a chance to see you for the first time in this video. You know, what would you want some people to know about you who may be interested in possibly writing to you? Uh, I'm pretty easy to get along with, and I could I could appreciate that. Whether I know the people or not, you know, I'd probably write back, give me something to do. Well, look, not only um, not only this that we're doing right here, I'm sure you'll talk to people in there. If you talk to anybody in there who's interested in sharing, maybe they got a like a crazy story or something that they want to share, you know, definitely put them in contact with me. Have them add me on the kiosk. I, I think you should be able to see that we've done this visit and you should be able to add me uh, if it's not already done that because we've done this visit. But just keep that in mind okay. as well. Okay. Um. You know, I'm sure we're getting closer to the end of this. Um, damn, what was I going to ask you? Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, it sounds like, obviously, drugs have been a part of your situation and, and your struggle. If you get this opportunity to get back out there, you're trying to get into this intensive inpatient treatment facility. You know, at 28 years old or about to be 28 years old, you know, what are what do you see for your life? Is it going to be like a constant struggle with the addiction? Do you see yourself getting beyond that? Is there something that you want to accomplish with yourself? That's really that's really why I want to get into the um, inpatient, the intensive, you know, inpatient program, because uh, I used to be a machinist. I used to work at Pacific Tool and Gauge making gunsmithing tools. Um, you know, I, I've had a pretty I've had it pretty easy when it comes to education in school and you know, I, I didn't really apply myself that much. Oh, we got one minute. Well, look, man, I'm hopeful that, you know, you're going to get this, this this opportunity to get back out there and hopefully you're going to get into this uh, treatment facility. Whatever ends up happening with you, you know, try to keep me, uh, try to send me a message or something or I'll message you in the near future and see what's going on. If you do end up getting released, look up After Prison Show on YouTube and send me a message. There's all sorts of ways to be able to get in contact with me there. I'd definitely like to see what happens to you or what happens with you when you get released. All right. Hey, man, Dallas, right. it's a pleasure to get a chance to speak with you. I'm going to put that money on your uh, inmate uh, commissary account, and I look forward to talking with you in the near future. Yeah, I appreciate it, man, and I, I respect what you're doing. It's pretty cool. Hey, hell yeah, man. You take care. Keep your head up in there, and I look forward to hearing what's going on with you. All right, you as well. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Well, that wasn't too bad. It's crazy. Damn, he's in Oregon. I just did a prison news story not too long ago about Oregon legalizing all drugs. Damn, that's wild. And that was also really interesting, the fact that I was able to just instantly visit with that guy without even requesting anything about him. Uh, kind of a timid sounding individual, like, you know, uh, maybe an introvert or something like that. Sounds like he comes from a pretty decent life and it's just drugs that have gotten in his way, like with so many others, especially others who we've had the opportunity to visit with here. If anybody's interested in learning anything more about Dallas, I'm not sure how long he's going to be in there for, but if you are interested in trying to correspond with him, visit the APS official website, APSofficial.com. Thanks for taking the time. I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Take care.